In lesson two, we're going to focus on formulas um, and how to substitute into them, and then how to sub or how to solve a formula for one specific variable. So first of all, definition of a formula. Um, basically, a formula is just an equation that contains more than one variable. So you're going to see a variety of formulas. This first one here, what we're trying to do is we're trying to find x when y is 9 in the formula 3x plus 2y equals 6. So what that means is I'm basically just thinking of it as substituting in to the formula for y equaling 9. So I'm going to take y equals 9, and I'm going to plug it into the formula and then figure out what x is. So again, whenever we substitute in, we always substitute in with parentheses. And then we just go ahead and we simplify this. So we get 18 equals 6. And we're trying to find x, which really means I'm solving for x. So that means I need to get x by itself. So just like what we did in the last lesson, we solve for x. So we get negative 12 here. Divide everything by 3. So we get x equals negative 4. So that means in this formula, when y is equal to 9, x is equal to negative 4. Um, here's another example. Here's a word problem using a formula. So a store selling art supplies finds that they can sell x sketch pads each week at a price of p dollars each, according to this formula. What price should they charge for each sketch pad if they want to sell 525 pads each week? So they want to know what price... So that means find P when we want to sell 525 sketch pads, which means X is going to equal to 525. So I'm going to use this formula, and it's just going to be like the last example. You're going to use the formula. You're plugging in one variable, and you're going to solve for the other. So I'm plugging in 525 for X. And I'm going to solve for p. And that's based on what the vari variables were defined as. So it was x sketch pads. That's how I knew when it said 525 pads, it meant x. And p dollars, when it said find the price, that means find the dollars, the price. So now we're going to get p by itself. So divide everything, or subtract 900 from both sides first before we can divide. So we're going to have 375 here. So negative 375 equals negative 300p. Divide everything by negative 300. And you're going to get out a decimal, which makes sense since we're talking about money to be getting out a decimal. So negative 375 divided by negative 300. We should be getting out a positive number because we are talking about money. So I get $1.25 would be equal to my price. For the next set of examples, what we're going to do is we're going to look at how do we solve for a specific variable. So instead of plugging in numbers to find the variable, we're going to just do it kind of in general terms. These are called literal equations, meaning we're going to get everything on one side except for L. You see how it says solve for L? So that means get L by itself. So when you're looking at this equation, you have to look at it as how am I going to get L by itself? So the first step is this 2w. This 2w is in the way of that. So that means you're going to want to bring this 2w over first. So subtract 2w from both sides. And you can't combine like terms here. You can't actually do p minus 2w. So you just have to rewrite it. And you're going to find that this is going to happen a lot for these types of problems. And then what we're going to do to get l by itself is divide both sides by 2. So your answer, those twos will cancel, your answer is going to be P minus 2W over 2 is equal to L. And you just leave it like that. So whenever they're not giving you another number to plug in, you're just going to have more variables. Like you're going to have the variable that's just going to be left in your final answer. But the goal is to get the one indicated variable by itself. So let's look at some other examples of this. This one here says we want to solve for X. So that means I need to get x by itself. So my first goal here 
when I look at this equation, is I have two terms with x's. So since you have two terms with x's, so I have this term and this term here with x, that means I need to get those together, and then I need to get all the numbers by themselves. So what I'm going to do first is bring that 3 over. So let's take care of that. So I have ax equals bx plus 8. And then the next goal is to be able to get the x's on one side and the numbers on the other. So that means I need to bring this bx over. And again, you can't actually subtract bx minus or bx from ax because they're not like terms. So you just kind of have to leave it like that. And now the next goal is you're trying to get x by itself. So you kind of want to think of this as the opposite of distributing something. So right now, this x has been distributed. But I can think of it as if I were to undistribute or factor, you would ask yourself, well, what would, it, what would I do? What would I get if I take x, if I divide x out of this first term? Well, you'd have an a. If you divide x out of that second term, you'd have a minus b. And to kind of check, if you distributed x through, you would have ax minus bx. So you're basically undistributing or factoring. And now the whole purpose of that was to get x by itself. And now that x is by itself, I'm going to be able to divide both sides of my equation by ax minus b. Or a minus b, not ax. So now those cancel. And I'm going to have x is equal to 8 over a minus b. And that's going to be your final answer. So remember, when you're trying to get the variable by itself, you can't have a and b still on the side of the equation. you got to have x completely alone. And the way to do that is to factor it out first so that you can make the operation between x and those other variables multiplication. So to cancel it out, you can divide. So your final answer is 8 over 8 minus b. Let's look at another one that's kind of like this. So this one we want to solve for y. So that means I need to get y by itself. So your first goal, whenever you have a fraction equal to a whole number, put that whole number over 1. And then think of this as a cross multiplication problem. When you cross multiply, though, remember, since these are binomials, you really want parentheses around there. So it's going to be a y minus 7, 1 times y minus 7, which is just y minus 7, and then 4 times parentheses x plus 5. Notice that I dropped the parentheses around the my, y minus 7 just because I had a 1 out in front, so I didn't really need the parentheses. And remember, I'm trying to get y by itself. So to get y by itself right now, you could add 7 over if you want. Um, so let's say we add the 7 over. I get y equals 4 times x plus 5 plus 7. Remember, you can't add the 7 yet because of these parentheses. Before you can add the 7, you need to distribute 4. So you could have waited on the adding the 7 and distributed first. Or basically how I have it right now, this is an answer y is by itself, but it would be better best if you actually went through and you distributed and you combined your like terms. So if I distribute that 4x, I'm going to get 4x plus 20 plus 7, and then now you have like terms, the 20 and the 7 that you can combine. So when you do this, instead of adding the 7 right away, if you wanted to, you could have distributed that 4 first. And then you would have got 4x plus 20, and then you would have added 7 to both sides. In the end, you get the same answer. It's just whatever you think of doing first is fine to do. Just make sure that you do distribute that 4 into the parentheses before you do the 7. So don't do 5 plus 7 and then multiply it by 4. It's going to give you a different answer. So make sure you take care of the parentheses first. Um, let's look at another example that has a little bit more complicated algebra. So let's take a look at this one. We want to solve this equation for h. And there's a lot of stuff going on here. So let me first rewrite it. So we have the volume equals length times width times height minus the width over 2 squared times pi h. 
So, looking at this, we want to get H by itself. So the first thing I notice is that I have an H in each piece. So you kind of want to think of this as factoring or undistributing that H. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that H out in front. So it's going to be LW minus W over 2 squared times pi. So basically, I took this H out of each piece. So now that I want to get H by itself, well, the only thing that's stopping H from being by itself is this whole thing in parentheses. So divide both sides of that entire thing, and you're going to have H by itself. So it looks really complicated, but really it wasn't many steps once you know what you're dividing by. So divide both sides by this whole thing in parentheses. And then what that does is it allows this to cancel here. So I'm left with an H on one side. And then volume over L times W minus W over 2 all squared times pi. And that will be your final answer. You don't have to simplify it. You just need to get H by itself. And we've managed to do that. So we're done with that one. Um, so that's really it for this. It's really just getting the variables by itself. So just make sure, you know, if you see terms like this where you have subtraction or addition and you have, you know, the variable that you're trying to solve for, you have it in each of those pieces, first think of it as undistributing or factoring it out so that you're going to be able to divide by everything else. You need to make that operation multiplication between the variable you're solving for and all the other stuff so that you're going to be able to divide it out. All right, and then in the next um, lesson, we're going to start talking about inequalities. So that's it.